Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Petite to Queen's Claim Your Career Crown podcast. I'm your host, Lynn, and today I'm joined by our wonderful VP of Operations, Amanda, and our very special guest, Deborah Hawkins. And we are gonna have a very powerful conversation today. We're gonna be talking about how to use intentional gratitude to combat depression and boost confidence. And I wanna share some about our guest because Deborah Hawkins is amazing. She's been blogging on gratitude and mindfulness since 2010, posting over 500 reflections of everyday experiences that have elevated her mood, along with tips on how to keep gratitude top of mind. You know, and she has a really interesting backstory because initially she began this practice to work her way out of depression. Now, it's her mission, now, now, it's her mission to show people how they can examine their own experiences of gratitude and use this understanding to lift their mood and live happier lives. Referring to her approach as intentional gratitude, she offers practical tools and examples to help people find resiliency during challenging times and optimize good feelings when things seem to not be going their way. Deborah has two books, The Best of No Small Thing, Mindful Meditations, and Practiced Gratitude, Transform Your Life, Making the Uplifting Experience of Gratitude Intentional, along with her Zoom-enabled class, Helium for Your Heart, Elevate Your Outlook with Intentional Gratitude, which sounds amazing, I love that. Um, And this will demonstrate a fresh approach to gratitude practice that is fun, authentic, and confidence boosting. Her personal story, which includes childhood trauma and depression, is so relatable and inspiring. You are going to be so excited to have and hear from Deborah today. Deborah, welcome. Welcome to the show. We're so thrilled to have you. Thank you, Lynn. Good to be here. All right. Before we get started, if any of our listeners are joining us for the first time, Uh, there's some intentional gratitude you could do for us. Please subscribe to our podcast, Claim Your Career Crown, wherever you find your podcasts. And while you're there, we'd love to have a five-star review. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's dive into this uh, because, Deborah, your story is so fascinating. I'd love to hear more about your journey that led you to writing books about mindfulness and gratitude practices. Thank you, Lynn. Um, To understand my professional journey or why I really want to bring this intentional gratitude approach to more people, it's good to understand my personal story. So um, I'm 65 now, just turned 65. Um, I grew up in the suburb of Chicago and suffered some level of trauma and abuse as a child. I came to two major conclusions about life when I was a child. One conclusion was that um, I wasn't very important. And the other conclusion was that nobody would ever listen to me. So these beliefs really affected how I grew into adulthood. So even though I was very smart and (laughs) hardworking, I often um, didn't, find career satisfaction or didn't find relationship satisfaction because I really didn't have very good self-esteem. So a lot of this really affected all this childhood experience affected my life in many ways. And I was at a low point in my early fifties and I moved to another city to improve my career and things didn't happen in another city either. So I moved back and I said, and then I had a car accident and I decided I really had to do something because I couldn't go on living this way. And I decided, well, I would start small and build on things incrementally to feel better. So I decided, well, I was a writer who wasn't writing and I would um, start writing a reflection about something I would something from my everyday experience that made me feel good. So something that would add to convenience to my life or joy and pleasure, or just added meaning 
um, something that reflected my values. And I would write simple reflections in like an open journal. And I decided to make that into a blog. I wanted to have a little bit of an audience, but it really almost didn't matter. I needed to have a purpose for writing. And this lifted my mood just doing this to see that things available to me would uh, could have that positive effect on me. And then um, after a few years of doing this blog, where I would write a reflection almost every week, I noticed I tended to write about certain themes. So I realized, one, just by having this practice, I started looking for things to be grateful about. I knew they were out there. So the, the knowledge and belief that they were out there already lifted my spirits. And then after I knew what my personal gratitude themes were, I started very intentionally asking myself, as I looked around in any situation, how might any of my gratitude themes be present in this situation? So I found that um, I was not only able to like convince myself to be happy when it wasn't. I actually looked to what I knew about myself to find something I really could appreciate in whatever was happening. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful because there is, if we take that step back and we look, there's so many things that we can be grateful for. And it can be as simple as, you know, seeing a bird who's uh, eating a berry on a bush, you know, and how beautiful the bush is or the berry is or the, the air, how clean it smells, something like that um, uh, can be right there in front of us and we're not seeing it. Very, that's very true. Um, some of the things I wrote about in my early years were as simple as I loved um, the sound of my ice maker in my freezer because I didn't have to do the work. I go, oh, I hear that. The ice maker is uh, downloading some ice for me. Great. And um, it could be like very simple things. The tile in a, the subway station. I go, wow, that's really pretty or that's really nicely put together. And I really started appreciating that. And I find that um, it's really wonderful to be in the moment. That's what helps you remember what you're really feel something about. If you could stop yourself every day in the moment, just a little bit and say, ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? And if it's good, how can I build on this? Those kind of questions can go a long way in making you feel better and giving you some power and control over your mindset. Yeah, I really love this outlook that you have. And I mean, you've touched on it already, but can you explain to our audience what exactly a gratitude practice is? And can you share how you developed yours? Sure, thank you. Um, well, there's two approaches to this gratitude practice where I could say that my practice is very different than what people are accustomed to, maybe keeping gratitude journal where they write down uh, 15 things they were happy about that happened to them that day. So I think this gives you a positive frame of reference, but it doesn't tap into the real power of gratitude because it's outside of your control. You're not in control over whether you get a good parking place <laughs> close to your destination or whether the guy you have a crush on in the office <laughs> Um, calls you. You're not in control of that. So it's much better, more powerful if you actually um, concentrate on things you have control over. And the way to start that is by understanding yourself. So I actually recommend everybody figure out what their gratitude themes might be. So uh, they might do this by exploring peak experiences or just remembering times when they were really happy and go into this a little bit and say, 
what was at the core? What was the essence of why I felt really good in this situation? One of the other things I recommend to people is taking out their cell phone or their um, a, a scrapbook. Could be regular photographs too. And look at pictures that they are drawn to. It could be like family, it could be a place on vacation, or it could just be the shape of something or a flower or something. And really start asking your questions about what is the essence of this thing. And then practice seeing those things in the world around you. So I developed what they call my grateful dozen. So my personal themes. So I believe everybody has their own themes and they don't, don't have to be like mine, but some of mine include like the feeling of belonging, um, which I believe is pretty common, but it's very strong for me. So like if I'm a at a baseball game, I really love that I'm wearing the same hat, hat as other people are. I also really feel grateful when I feel I'm getting something for free or winning something. It doesn't have to be big. I'm really happy when I uh, save my grocery store receipts and win a free pot and pan later. I go, oh, yes. It, it doesn't <laughs> matter what it is. It's the feeling that the universe is smiling on me that really makes me feel good. Uh, and beauty and humor. I have certain gratitude themes. So sometimes I will actually just be in the moment and notice that I feel grateful for this thing that I'm experiencing. And sometimes I will actually ask myself, okay, this might be difficult, or I can't think of something where I'm really excited about this situation. And then I'll say, how are any of my themes showing up? And very often, one of them are. Like, um, I tell the story frequently. I remember a time being at a grocery store and I was miserable because I was waiting in a long line at the checkout. And I, I didn't think it would move any faster. You know, I'm thinking that I must have picked the absolute worst line there was. And then I started looking at everybody's face that was at other registers or in line with me. And I realized they were all in the same boat. I felt like a strong sense of belonging. And we all looked at each other and started laughing. So there was something about, for me, about feeling belonging that really lifted my spirits. Some people love to feel that they really are an expert or know something, and they really get off on sharing their knowledge with some people. Some people really like things to be quiet, and other people really feel grateful when, they're, when their adrenaline is going. So it's important you have to be genuine when it comes to gratitude. And it's important that um, you feel um, genuinely grateful and follow your own philosophy. It's not what your pastor or minister or parents or best friend tells you to feel grateful for. It's what you personally know yourself to really light up about. Yeah, I really yeah. love what you're what you're doing. And I think it's interesting because I feel like it can be hard to be grateful at first. It, I, I think a lot of people, it's easy to, to fall into a feeling of negativity and just look on the pessimistic side of things. But I think that once you start intentionally looking for things to be grateful for, there can, there's so much in the world that you can be grateful for and that can make you feel a sense of happiness, right? Absolutely. I agree with you. Um, there was um, a Benedictine monk that actually Oprah interviewed uh, David Steindl Rast. And he coined the expression in a famous TED talk that uh, if you want to be happy, be grateful. So sometimes I, um, happiness is hard to define. It's very elusive. And very often when people are happy, they ruin it because they're afraid of losing that state. When yeah. you 
know how to be grateful by intention. You, when you know what makes you personally feel good or what you personally appreciate, you can practice going back to that state at your own will. So you're not dependent on um, good fortune kind of happening to you. It's what you know about yourself. And um, this was tremendously important during the pandemic and continues to be important. I know many of your listeners are in the business world. It's really important to have a positive mindset and there's nothing like really reaching into yourself and knowing what it is that you can do for yourself to make you feel better. You don't have to maybe get the million dollar sale every day. So that's nice, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, that is so true. You say that your gratitude practice can help with depression too. How does it do that? Um, I think, the the worst thing about depression is losing a sense of hope it's not just that things don't aren't working out the way you'd like them to but i think depression really sets in when you feel oh it's not going to change it's not going to get any better than this so having gratitude practice and knowing what to do to lift yourself up and you know this works because you've done it before, to some extent at least. Um, I think this can be really important to bring yourself out of depression. It's also very common to feel that um, you're not in control when you're depressed. And uh, when you have this kind of practice, it's all about you. It's your, your personal responsibility to um, bring your own mood up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Depression is something that um, is common in in my family and with people I know. My sister Rachel, who also works here at Petite de Queen, she's had depression for going on ten years now. And how can someone like her, someone with depression, begin a gratitude practice when it can be so hard to feel grateful at all? You know, when you have that sense of hopelessness that you talked about. I believe that it's really important to start small and to start with what you know about yourself and to journal or do other practices that gets you to know yourself a little bit better. And even when people are have a tendency to be depressed, they could probably think of a few times in their lifetime when they've been happy or they felt blessed or they felt lucky or something. And if they go into those memories a little bit, they could actually maybe understand what drove them to feel better and practice seeing those things in the broadest way possible and that they could apply to other things. I explain often, like people have asked me, how has my gratitude practice changed me? And I say, the biggest thing is that I don't feel like a victim. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. so important that uh, the world might not be going great. You know, everything is not the way I like, but it's like, as long as I know I have the choice of what to put my attention on, and as long as I know myself, what I've liked, what I can appreciate, what I can build on. I can yeah. feel feel better. Yeah. That and is that so goes, powerful. Yeah. Well, and it goes back to what you've already you've already mentioned and you've alluded to about gra gratitude themes. And I would, Deborah, I'd really like to dive a little bit more into what are gratitude themes? Um, because maybe I'm not going deep enough when I'm thinking about this. And how can someone practice? Um, who wants to practice this intentional discover, uh, intentional gratitude, um, discover their own personal gratitude themes. And that's really the core of my practice is really knowing what your themes are. And I teach this a little bit in my class, Helium for the Heart, Your Heart, Elevate Your Outlook with 
intentional gratitude and the three methods I present and I guide people in learning some of them for themselves, but they have to practice this a little bit, is to um, look at the pictures, um, take what you know about yourself, and also look at maybe a peak experience and um, try to understand that. So if you take a, a great memory, let's say a memory of you being on vacation, and you might ask yourself a little bit further, what is it about this memory that really makes you feel so good? What uplifts you? So um, I use an example sometimes. Let's say you were um, had a memory of being on vacation when you were 12 years old and you were eating ice cream and a chocolate ice cream on a pier. And um, well, you can't like make gratitude all your theme about having chocolate ice cream. You'd be limited if you had to have chocolate ice cream in order to be grateful or happy. And let's say um, you can't always be on vacation, <laughs> those kind of things. But if you can look at that memory of really feeling wonderful and look at some of the broader things, themes that it might suggest, and the, uh, when I say broader themes, I refer to an idea, one or two or three words that captures the essence of why something is a certain way. And then also realize that that has to be broadly applied to other situations. Um, I say that um, instead of saying chocolate ice cream, I could say treating myself is a theme for me. So when I treat myself, I realize that I can appreciate this. Like when I have an experience and I treated myself well, it's like an experience of something that uplifts me. Or I could say, um, uh, I love feeling like a kid. Part of this memory that was so wonderful to me was remembering what it was like to be 12 years old. So this, I don't necessarily have to be in a pier or wearing cutoffs in a, a halted top or whatever. But um, if I boil this, the, this great memory down to some themes that could be broadly applied, I could look at situations go, oh, this made me feel like a kid. I feel very often that people need to find something in their work situation that makes them feel like a kid, if that was indeed a great time in their life. So <clears throat> wherever you were at, whatever experiences you had, if you take one or two positive experiences and really delve into them to understand the essence of why you were really grateful for this experience, why this thing really sticks with you, 20, 30, or whatever, I won't talk about my age again, um, however long later, it's, it's a win. Yeah, yeah, no, that's beautiful. And I really appreciate your, your explaining that further because then that helps people look at that at any given situation, how they can feel, you know, more grateful. And um, I really appreciate, Deborah, your sharing uh, your journey uh, to overcoming depression and how intentional gratitude can help others do the same. I mean, this has just been such a powerful uh, episode. Um, will you share with our listeners how and where they can find out more about you? Thank you. Um, I have a website, um, and a, which is where I post my blog. And I continue to post a blog every week. So I just posted one today. My website is called No Small Thing. And the blog is there, so you could read that. I also have a section that says current titles. So if you want to look into buying a book, there are links there from the current titles position where people could um, buy the book on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or whatever. I also have um, sections on the um, site for um, uh, uh, my calendar uh, section, 
list on different times that I will be doing the course. So that okay. information is around. I have a link tree handle called Grateful Deb, and um, which gives a little example of some of the things I'm doing and also has some of the podcasts I'm on. So I hope <laughs> this will be on the uh, my my link tree account as well, my landing page, because it's wonderful to share this kind of conversation. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And for everybody who's tuning in, we'll make sure that all those links are down below in the comment section. And uh, for everyone who did tune in today, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a really powerful and informative discussion. And if you have ideas that you would like to share, um, please, you can leave us a comment right below in the comment section. We love hearing from you. And if you have a question or would like to suggest a topic for discussion, you can also reach us by emailing join the conversation at petitequeen.com and uh, just let us know what your thoughts are there. And of course, to stay current on all of our insightful advice, our breakthrough advantages, wonderful episodes like the one today with Deborah, stay current with us by signing up for our weekly wisdoms newsletter at petitequeen.com. And I wanna thank everyone again for listening and tuning in. Amanda, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. And Deborah, Deborah, thank you. Thank you for this amazing episode and sharing um, all this incredible tips on on gratitude. I'm very, I am very grateful. <laughs> well, thank you. It was nice to be here. <laughs>